So Patrice just called me and was asking me to open the door for her. Screw that. Hey y'all. Why didn't you answer your phone? I called you and you did not answer the phone with straight voicemail. Hello? Hey y'all. Why didn't you answer your phone with straight voicemail? Alright. Do you see the crazy look in her eyes? That's a woman that just showed up three hours late, barking out orders. I don't think she realizes she's speaking to a thug. All right, this classroom tour was supposed to be done by Patrice, but she's three hours late, so I will do it. To our right, we have a restroom. And then guess what? We got another one that's also dingy. Surprise, surprise. The classroom's dingy too. School's out for the summer, y'all. Okay, so this is a class fridge, some tasks for the students, a microwave, and a whole bunch of junk. And this is a view of the whole class. So guys, over the next few weeks, we're really gonna turn up this class and make it something special. This is our classroom coffee shop where our students learn job skills. And you see the nice paint shop? Yep, I painted it myself. This is our classroom arcade machine. I found it in the garbage a couple of weeks ago while I was looking for garbage. Well, I fixed it, and now everyone loves it, and this stool here, I got it for five bucks. So this is our podcasting room. I built it myself. Our students are going to start podcasting next school year. So when you see stuff like this in your child's classroom, know that the teacher usually did it out their own pockets. So this is my office, aka the school dumpster where people just throw stuff. And over there is my work area. Sometimes Patrice works there too. All right, so let's get to our craft and micro enterprise room. This is probably what you're all here for. And we're going to start redoing this room first in our classroom. So take a good look. It's a mess. There's a lot of garbage in here, but I'm going to start getting to it. So I needed some tables for the crafting room. And while the school was nice enough to find me the worst tables they could find, you see this one's falling apart from water damage. Me and Patrice were thinking about just like painting the tops and putting epoxy on, but well, that's going to create a really big mess. So we decided just to get new tabletops, keep the legs. So I bought five tabletops. They're about $20 each. And I got these two stools on clearance at the Ikea. So altogether, I paid about, I think, $117 with tax. And we're going to start assembling these tables. All right, so let's get started. All I'm doing is putting these legs on the table. I already removed them from the other tables and I'm just screwing them in. I got myself an electric screwdriver and we're doing each table in about five minutes. And as you can see, I'm pretty much an expert. So one by one, as I assemble the tables, I put them in the room on the right side and I removed the old tables on the left side. At this point, I had to stop what I was doing because some guys showed up to record a podcast. Okay, y'all boys ready to record? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. All right, so this is a podcast that I record with two losers. It's called the Two Loser Podcast. It's about two guys who don't know anything about sports. One, one, and one loser. There's always one, one, and one loser. Money on the line. Here's something cool. While they're recording, I could see them out in the classroom. But I turn off the volume because I really don't care what they have to say. So Patrice just called me and was asking me to open the door for her. Screw that. Hey, y'all. Why didn't you answer your phone? I called you and you did not answer the phone with straight voicemail. Hey, y'all. Why didn't you answer your phone with straight voicemail? All right, so this brings us back up to the current time where Patrice showed up three hours late looking all crazy. Just look at the mind. She crazy. All right, since Patrice is late, I'm going to make her... Push all this garbage out and throw I'm it away. I'm not pushing no garbage push it, out. Push it. Push. I'm not. Go. I'm not. No. <laughs> Go. <laughs> so Terrell is. He can't even look. Look, y'all. Wait, are you throwing out our signs? For you guys out there, no, I did not almost fall and drop everything. I did that for you guys so you could have a laugh. And yes. I was throwing out these nasty signs. No. <laughs> That's what he gets. I'll help you pick these up. Y'all know I do not do manual labor. What in the? All right, y'all. Terrell, I can't. I don't touch the garbage. You want me to throw it inside while you open it? So, y'all, I'm about to throw up. 
I had to help Terrell throw that stuff in the trash and that trash stinks so bad. She got that crazy look in her face again. All she does is complain, complain, complain. Sometimes I think I'm the only sane person around here. All right, y'all, welcome to the beginning of our craft abilities pretend. There's a sign here, craft room. So, so far, Terrell has done a very, very good job painting the walls and putting up these new tables and replacing some of the tabletops so that we have a nice, clean and pristine room for our kids. So let me just show you a few things that we've brought in. So Terrell and I are both creating this room with our own funds. And so this is a teacher funded project. Just know that there are teachers out there who are spending all their hard earned coins on their students. So this is our cutting machines. We have a Cricut maker and we also have a Cameo and we plan to provide instruction to the students and show them how to use these machines and make all the things. Now over here is going to be our heat press area. And right now we just have two heat presses. We have a tumbler press that we brought in ourselves. And we also have a Cricut Easy Press that we brought in. We're planning on having a larger heat press and also a hat press that we will be bringing in also. Moving right along, we also have an Epson Eco Tank 4700 and this printer is for sublimation. So we converted this printer into sublimation, which requires sublimation ink and sublimation paper. And we will be using this in our craft room also. We do need to add another printer so that we can do some more of our projects with our Cricut and Cameo. And we have this empty space here where we're going to put some shelves. Not really filling this, but we're probably gonna keep this because for our students, it's important for them to learn certain skills. And so we are going to be using these bins to help teach different skills like organizational skills and sorting. And so we are going to keep this here for our students. And this board, not sure if y'all know what a task analysis is, but a task analysis is just a detailed plan. You can kind of go from one to five or one to 10. And it's a, a task that's broken into steps. Wait, y'all. Almost forgot to show y'all. So remember how Terrell had been saying that he had butcher paper? Well, guess what? He finally brought it in. So this is a butcher paper, and this is important for us when we're doing sublimation. But that's gonna be it for today. We have so much more planned for this room. I can't wait until we're finished. We have, how many more weeks do we have to finish this, Terrell? Seven weeks. So we have seven weeks to get this perfect and welcoming for our kids but yeah y'all that's it make sure to hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video and also hit the subscribe button and just choose to hang out with us all the time